But you look at Amarim and De Terbi, and the first thing I think is, why would they want to ruin their careers by going there? Until no. the club has what can be seen from the outside is a clear plan upstairs. Why would you go for it? My life is a cage, but on stage I'm free, everybody. Welcome to the Football Ramble. Harry Kane got bind through and Man City are in action tonight. It's Wednesday, 6th of March. I'm Marcus Speller. I'm Jim Campbell. I'm Pete Donaldson. And I'm Andy Russell. Hello, everybody. Good to have you with us. And thanks to friend of the Ramble, Gareth Beavis, for giving us that intro line. You can submit the intro line for next Wednesday's show by signing up to our Patreon for just $5 a month. You'll also get ad-free versions of the Ramble, OTC and Upfront, as well as an extended version of every Wednesday's Ramble. We call it Ramble Uncuts, everybody. The I think stuff I we say on there, Pete Donaldson, should quite frankly get us in court. I've got <laughs> I've got so many things to talk about this week. Yeah, me too. Mm. I, know, I think I know that, Gareth Beavis. He works yeah. for Saga. Really? There you go. Ah, so uh, we'll, sponsorship in the post. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Head to patreon.com forward slash football ramble if you never want to hear Saga again. Mm. Uh, right. Champions League. Yes. It's back, baby. It happened last night. Bayern Munich 3, Lazio nil. Smokey Morris is out. The idea that Bayern might completely fluff this was nice while it lasted, wasn't it? But I think we <laughs> all knew that they were going to turn this around. In was this it league. nice, Jim? They've got two Englishmen playing for them. I, I'm not that bothered about that. Really? Was no. this turned you all pro Bayern? That's interesting. Well, you got to think. What a twist. you got to think of the big picture, Andy, haven't you? <laughs> I want Englishmen to win in Germany. It starts here. Right, you want, you want the, the muscle memory to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, though. You say that it was kind of a foregone conclusion. I understand why you say that, Jim, because that's what happened. But when Chiro Immobile had that chance, Andy Brassel, didn't he? His teammate, who was on the edge of the box, couldn't remember who it was, fell flat on his face and hit the ground when he missed that. Mm. He knew it'd gone. Mm. I, I think yeah. it was. I don't think it was as as, um, as clear a chance. What as was the XG? Made out, what was, was the so, so, I, I couldn't couldn't <laughs> tell you. I thought it was an absolute sitter. Uh, it was, it oh. came at him so fast though, and it's from a tough <laughs> angle. I, I know we're talking about a high level at the Champions League, and we're talking about two people in the room who have very different football skills. Is that fair? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably fair. Actually, that makes it, my right, benchmark is off, and I couldn't <laughs> do that. <so. laughs> wow, Andy Rosenthal, you forgive him. <laughs> Let's see if that makes a difference. How good do you think Kylian Mbappe is? Because I just think he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> farmers League, isn't it? he's only ever done it in a Farmers League. <laughs> well, either way, it was a chance that uh, for that a man missed. who scored over 200 Serie A goals, mm. he should have been putting it away. Yeah, but it wasn't in Serie A, Andy. Maybe that's why he missed it. Who yeah. knows? Probs, eh? um, the big story of the night, of course, was that Eric Dyer got a clean sheet on his Champions League debut for Bayern. Lovely to see. <laughs> like, you're right, uh, that it, is the big story <laughs> in, in, in the week that he's had his contract extended. Of course, are, yeah. he's made a massive impression there at the moment, which tells you two things. Mm. Firstly. Buying a mess. <laughs> yes, well, that is one of them. It tells you. It tells you two cool things. Andy. <laughs> yeah, yes, it does. It does. I think. I think the other thing it, it tells you is that uh, you never what, gave us the first one. What Eric uh, Pete gave you the first one. Ah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Eric Dyer is actually really undervalued. I think in by terms whom? of. I, th- I think I think by English football culture generally and English football watchers, mm. just because he didn't fit Spurs yes. or what Spurs were doing for for, for quite a while. Blame Spurs, obviously. Yeah, I, I'm not sure we can do that with Bayern about to lose the league anymore. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the fact is that he has made a massive impact at Bayern, not just in terms of playing. And yes, there are a lot of holes in the squad, and he's someone who's quite versatile, so mm. he can cover a lot of those holes. Mm. But he's been given a lot of responsibility mm. early on, and what he's brought to the dressing room, while well, still learning to speak German, is really impressive, actually. People really like him, and they mm. signed him up as soon as possible. Yeah, are they okay. treating his brother well? <laughs> okay, that's crucial. Um, that... Well, that, it, is, it is crucial, because it's a much bigger climb into the stands in the Allianz Arena. Yeah, you got a treat... And his brother years well. Older. You got to treat Harry Kane's brother with contempt. That's what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. If you want to get the treat, best, treat him well, but from a distance. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. Uh, well, Harry Kane, of course, scored a couple of goals. Of course, he did. Jim Campbell. Yeah, he he's is... got thirty-three goals in in all competitions for Bayern this season. Mm, I'm not surprised at all. The way he he mops up those those mm-hmm. second balls so so mm-hmm. well, doesn't he? You just there was never with either goal really. There was never any doubt he was going to mm-hmm. was going to no. score. Yeah. Although I think probably Thomas Muller's was the goal of the night. The way he, like just takes that off of uh, Delict's shot it was mm-hmm. d- delicious. He, f- <laughs> <laughs> he fooled everybody, including uh, <laughs> the commentary team. Absolutely. Do you think there's a sort of older brother, little brother thing with uh, Delict and Dyer going on? 
Uh, th- th- they are like, they if, you're, similar, if you're yeah. only half paying attention, yeah, you could mistake one for the other, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah, do you think Dyer's, I mean, he's, what has he played? I think eight games in total there or, there, there, or there, there or thereabouts for Bayern so far uh, since he's been there. I mean, is he, is he going to get ahead of De Ligt and Kim? I, I know he did last night ahead of Kim, he was on the bench, but I mean, they're, they're two sort of big hitters, are they not? Yeah, and, and, and Kim is the best defender they've got. Yeah. I, I mean, really, he's to plug gaps. That's what he's there for. I mean, they always made it quite clear that they were going to use him as a central defender. But the fact that they were unable to get Palina or anyone else defensive midfield wise mm. made me think they'll probably end up using him there at some point. Unlike maybe, Lance. maybe if they're in the back end of the Champions League, that's what they do. They use him in in just a little bit in front of Kim mm. De Ligt. Ooh. But it depends. It depends who they get next round. Depends how deep they go, doesn't it? Pete Donaldson. We've we, people have been having a little chuckle about Harry Kane going to Bayern Munich, and they're quite Why? clearly not going to win the league this season. Right. Okay. But they're still in the Champions League. Now, it's a tall order, of course, because there are some quality teams left in the Champions League. But the Champions League final is at Wembley. <laughs> How about this? You are very excited about the Euros coming. I summer. am excited about it. It's the only Euros. a few months away, lest we forget. Yeah. Yeah. Harry Kane, mm-hmm. to a lesser extent, Eric Dyer. <laughs> they, How lesser an extent? <laughs> well, Harry Kane, they, 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 uh, they, they finish the season strongly in Germany, of course, then go to Wembley for the final yes. of the Champions League, okay. win that trophy there back to Germany and win another trophy. If they How does that sit with you? Well, I'd prefer him to go... I would prefer uh, Bayern to go out of the um, Champions League right. and then him uh, get incredibly upset and just and just, and just just down tools for the, for the rest of the season okay. so that he's fresh for the Euros. Would that not Full be of morale. Situation? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> full, yeah. Full of good vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You do, you, yeah well, we wouldn't want him too happy, would we? No, no exactly. No. Okay, okay. Uh, imagine if it was such a culture of publicly <laughs> slagging everyone off at Bayern <laughs> is that, that Kane turns up for his first England press conference in the summer and goes, yeah, I just, honestly, I think my teammates are all twats apart from Jim. <laughs> <laughs> um, apparently, um, Thomas Tuchel, only his second win in seven knockout matches as a Bayern coach, by the way, he, he, during his pre-match uh, team talk, he kicked a box and broke his toe. Lest we right. forget, in the Champions League final, he was involved in the first Champions League final he was involved in. He was uh, about in crutches. Oh, yeah. yeah. So well, maybe maybe he did that the first time as well. What is going he on? retired quite he's... early. That's probably... <laughs> Stop kicking stuff, Thomas. What, what do you do? Like, is, is that to, Does that inspire people? I've just broken my toe for you, boys. Or does that kind of take the shine off uh, what you were trying to do? Yeah, uh, does, does yeah. it sort of... Are you constantly flinching because you don't know what's coming next? <laughs> like, could there be some sort of accidental projectile coming towards you at any time if yeah, Tuchel's in the Ferguson room? It. Yeah, true. I don't think it like hit one of the players and then wore an Alice band, Beckham style. <laughs> well, sure you know, not, yet. not yet. Not um, yet. Well, Tuchel has lost 24% of his matches as Bayern boss, which is the worst percentage since Soren Lerby was manager in the, the 91-92 season. So that shows you... Mm. Uh, how um, badly he's been doing as Bayern boss. Uh, he has also got the lowest win percentage since Louis van Gaal in 2009 to uh, 2011. Um, so it's not going very well, Andy. Now, the the, the big chat, of course, now is uh, Jabby Alonso seems to be heading towards Bayern Munich. Surely that's where he's going to go. That makes perfect sense. No, I think it's a bit premature. Do like you think the, he'll stay at Bayer, Leverkusen? I think he might. I think he hasn't decided he's yet. He's not going to go to Liverpool, surely, or Real Madrid now. He's, he's not going to go to Real Madrid because Ancelotti signed an extended contract in mm. 2026. But um, Liverpool, I don't think it's completely off the table. I think it's interesting that the line peddled by Sky Germany, which is where the report has come from, uh-huh. has said that maybe following Klopp is like a bit too much of a mountain. It yeah, is. totally. Which, which to me feels like quite a German perspective on it as mm-hmm. as, as well. Mm. But look, I, I don't think you can completely rule it out that he will stay at, at Leverkusen for next year because he gets to have a go at the Champions League with, uh-huh. with them. He's got, he knows that these jobs will still be here for him mm-hmm. down the line, especially at Bayern and Real Madrid because they tend to change coaches every couple of years yeah. anyway. There, there would be something really, really bleak about him just going straight to Bayern. Um, we've seen it a million times, more, more so with players than coaches, I suppose. Although it's you know true with coaches as well, Bayern just sort of sucking up all the best talent there, and it would it would be genuinely kind of um, uh, just refreshing to see him stay in the post and, and as you yeah. say, have a, have a proper tilt at the Champions League because we're in a strange situation at the moment where two of the best teams in Europe are playing in the Europa League and yeah. and, and mm, we're about exactly. to meet each other at some point, mm. and and that's um, I suppose indicative of of quite how well both of those teams are doing from from a, a, a position that you might not have expected them to. Yeah, I know. I think it's fair Ooh. comment. I think I think whatever happens, he'll stay in Germany, whether it's a Bayer Leverkusen or he moves to Bayern Munich. 
I mean, with Leverkusen, they've never won the Bundesliga in their history, which I find incredible. I, yeah. I guess that's that's the thing. Is finished second if, a fair few times. I mean, Bayern Neverkusen, of course, Andy. Well, yeah, yeah, right. I mean, is there much of a narrative around that, Andy? Like, is, is there a bit of a fear of the, the Neverkusen thing happening again in Germany? <laughs> Not now. I think uh, ten less, points clear. Less so, mm. yeah, but it's it's the way they're playing. Yeah, it's, it's the way they're playing Still as well. They're as well. just the, the way they respond to everything, the way they react to everything. Uh-huh. It feels like Alonso has just filled the players with such confidence. They've got every possible scenario under control. Yep. They win games in in so many different mm-hmm. ways. I mean, the thing is, if you look at it, we talked about the stats with Tuchel there, but statistically, up until. Leverkusen beat Bayern like comprehensively yeah, by yeah, the yeah. way uh, about three or four weeks ago up until that point Bayern had had the sixth best start statistically in Bundesliga history wow isn't that remarkable yeah. and yet still they couldn't get anywhere near <clears throat> Leverkusen that's how good they are but I've, I guess the other side of what you were saying about it would be sad if he moved on at this point and wouldn't he stick there for a season as you say Marcus they've never won it before so you think can it get any better well that's from, and, that, from, from and that's my point is is, is is they're on for the, the, the Bundesliga they've got a great chance at um, Europa League I mean they've the last major trophy they won was what was it mid nineties the the German Cup I think yeah and they should win the Pokal as, yeah, as, right. as, as and, well and then, I mean you're uh, looking you're looking at a treble yeah and and then they won the the Uh-oh. the old UEFA Cup <laughs> <laughs> not a treble not the treble I mean but this, this they won the, the UEFA Cup, Cup in the it's... mid to late eighties you know that that's yeah. what they've got so there'll be a lot of Bayer Leverkusen fans who have never seen them win a trophy or don't have any memory of it yeah and they probably won't want me to be talking about the treble because of course they are the team that blew a treble in nine days yes. Yeah, no, they blew years. the treble. They're fighting for a treble a this treble, time. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> what, what, Danny what, Murphy over there. <laughs> what sort of team, uh, team are they putting out in in the not Champions League this year? Though is it just a, <laughs> is it just a little bit easier to um, is it just a little bit easier not being in the Champions League and not having your biggest players kind of playing week in week out? Well, they're, is, they're, is, it, is, is this how aided them? They've got a good enough squad mm. to to shuffle. So right. yeah, I, I think you're right. That might make a difference. Granite Jack is year. a difference, eh? A Granite Jack is a massive difference. Him and his hamstring, his solid, yeah. strong hamstring. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that that would be fun, wouldn't it? Him going to, say, Liverpool and taking Granite Xhaka with him. <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like you can imagine him going, he's he's one of the people, maybe the person he trusts most on the pitch. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's the Alonso effect. Yeah, that's well, the, that's the it's leaving the effect. effect. It's the Jacker effect. It's the Jacker effect. You say that like he wasn't brilliant for, for Arsenal for the past two seasons. <laughs> I think, But you... in a very different role. In a very, very right. different role. I just okay. remember the time when you all booed him, Jim. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> I wasn't booing. Yeah. Jacka is I the, was saying boo is this is the sound that um uh, Radiohead do in creep. Johnny Green was yes. Shaka. <laughs> is that what it is? Very aggressive. <laughs> you could have gone for Shaka Khan. Why? That that's too make, that's that's not yeah. that's not aggressive enough. No. Shaka. Jacker. But it's loving, and I think that's <laughs> loving. And if you look at what Alonso's doing to Bayer Leverkusen, right. it's, it's tender, loving but football. There is, <laughs> I, I, I promise you, having watched him for a long time, there, there is a lot of both in Granite Jacker. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fair enough. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, whatever Alonso does, I'm quite sure he'll stay in Germany, and it would be very much to uh, Harry Kane's benefit if he went to Bayern. Let's be clear, because if he stays at Bayer Leverkusen, bigger picture, lads, bigger yeah. picture. <laughs> is that Charlie Kane an impression of? Yeah, that's right. I saw Charlie Kane on a flight from Leverkusen uh, a few months ago, and he has a blue passport. That's news. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, it's just because he's recent. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It wasn't a choice. I'm just saying. I just went. That's it. I just looked at him and went, "Grow up, grow up, Charlie, <laughs> with your new passport." Yeah, my, Colour, my... What, should he have coloured it in? Yeah, coloured brown. Go on. <laughs> get, get a passport holder. Exactly. Yeah. You get a little Bayern or a Harry they're Kane a, thing. They're always a faff, aren't they? Imagine it's that a... if he had a Harry Kane branded passport holder <laughs> show up in the airport. <laughs> he would be Might not be the best look. He'd be trying to flog him, wouldn't he? Yeah. Let's be clear. <laughs> um, elsewhere in the Champions League last night, Real Sociedad lost uh, 2-1 to Paris Saint-Germain. And of course, 4-1 on Ag. Kylian Mbappe scored twice. Talking I of actually Ag. thought he was really good, Marcus. I know you don't rate him that highly. No, no, but... no. He definitely put in a shift. He certainly did. <laughs> yeah. He really looks like a superhuman in some context, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah. The, the, the sort of the, the <laughs> very clear optic difference between him mm. and, and whoever he's absolutely skinning <laughs> is, is just from phenomenal sometimes. It yeah. was interesting the way that Luis Enrique, because of course there's been all the discussion over the relationship with them over the last mm. week and a half. It sort of escalated. He was asked about it again in the press conference afterwards, which has been annoying Luis Enrique. And when he's annoyed, he doesn't shut down. He really gets stuck into journalists. Mm. But Do it was the journalists it... know that? <laughs> oh, they definitely know that. It was, it was interesting how he, he framed it, though, last night. They, they asked him about Mbappe and what everything that's happened 
uh, over the last little while. And he said, look, let's be honest. Whoever his manager is, he's going to score 50 goals a season and knock out 25 assists as well. Mm. He's the best player in the world. End of. Yeah, I mean, he's right. But he won't be playing in League uh, McDonald's next season because McDonald's will be the sponsor of League Un, which mm. I'm all for, quite frankly. Do you reckon, as a friend of mine suggested to me over text, that maybe he's moved so he won't be dubbed Killian Mbappe? <laughs> oh, stuff. oh yeah. good stuff. like it. The thing is, <laughs> there will be people looking at this going, well, this makes French football incredibly cheap. Well, firstly, it's French football. French fries football. Is that French fries? <laughs> Freedom fries for the There you go, baby. That's for the international market. Uh. But also, they're currently sponsored by Uber Eats. Mm. And there is an Uber Eats delivery driver who delivers the ball to every game. I like that. At the moment. That. Yeah. That's it's, good. Is it's it? really Can not. Somebody it? say League, League Un. Un. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, they, they deliver McDonald's, don't they? Don't they? Yes, I, I think mean, they do. I yeah, think, uh, yeah, I think they partner with some it. either Uber Eats or yeah, either. Right. So they're uh, just going through the motions here, Lego. Yeah, we've like had enough saying. of your sponsorship, but uh, yeah. do you know anybody who might be interested? Yeah. The, <laughs> I mean, the only thing we're ever ordering is McDonald's. <laughs> Let's just go straight there. Yeah. Why, does, why don't they just have the posts as big French fries? Yeah, I like think that. That's... And the ball could be a celebrated McDonald's meatball that I've just uh, th- realised they don't really round stuff yeah they don't or, it would uh, be good if they they sort of the players came out through the golden arches yeah wouldn't it that, I, I think yeah. that would be a missed do opportunity they if they don't do that chimpanzee nuggets <laughs> select select you can yeah, select. select they're longer for yeah. crying sure, surely yeah. the apple pies the red hot apple pies <laughs> when you when <laughs> burning your hit, you start screaming ah! mind you some players like Grealish they would be just a little chicken McNugget wouldn't it yes. yeah just did, a little one did it Sorry, Marcus. Well, I was going to say, are there any, um, you know, that apparently you know, around the world there are sometimes uh, local um, dishes at McDonald's, shall we say. Is there anything in France like a McSnail? <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. McSnail. They've got a chance to do something there. And, and France, mm. they love their food. They're very good at it. Oh. So surely they should yeah. uh, when, partner with McDonald's. When, we, truffle in there when we did an, <laughs> when we did an at the match in Istanbul, mm. um, our good friend, Sam, who was taking photos yeah, yeah, and yeah. video for us out there. A he, he, he went and had a McDurham. Ooh, what's yeah. that now? Yeah. yeah. Horrid, apparently. Oh. Well, is that Durham then, wheat? Is that the, is that the, what's Durham? No, no, Durham. It's, it's, it's like, um, yeah, it's like a kebab. Ah, yeah. uh, okay, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at the uh, McDonald's menu. I mean, we've uh, it's pretty standard stuff. They've got mm, disappointing, um, I think. cheeseburger royale. Uh, which is yeah, we all know what. That Although is. famously, you can you can get a pint in McDonald's, can't you? That's true. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's Though true. with French fans' records for like you know, chucking receptacles at players and getting games <laughs> abandoned, probably not the best mix. Can you get a pint of wine in, in uh, McDonald's? Asking for a former England manager. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I bet that there's nowhere in France where they will give you a pint of wine. Yeah. You, you can have a pint and you can have some wine, but you cannot have a pint of wine. You have to do it yourself. Yeah. And if you do, it, you'll still be, be fr- Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> just a few old, old English gentlemen outside. There's a veggie paprika. Paprika's always a big kind of like continental kind of flavour. Very Hungarian. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. McFoie gras. I oh. just can't get that out of my mind. In a little pot like, a, like tomato sauce. Yeah. Well, the possibilities are endless for your France there, so do get involved. Did, we, Ma- we thoroughly uh, recommend. Marcus, you're a big Star Wars head. You know, I just said that for a linking reason. But um, <laughs> uh, do you know, uh, did you see the Star Wars um, Chilean um, advert thing that no. came out this week? No, I didn't. Apparently back in the, I think, early 90s um, when they put Star Wars, where they put any film on the television, they would try and tie in the um, advertising so they wouldn't have to go to an ad break. So right. that um, at one point, I don't know, Obi-Wan Kenobi's like opening a opening like a, a box to give Luke Skywalker, I don't know, if I can, one French fries or silly swords or something. Oh. And they'll cut in um, a, a video of some hands just pulling out like a Thavitha. <laughs> <laughs> Very really? nice. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's Unreal. really funny I stuff. like how you just said the word for beer in Spanish. Well, because I think that's what... Chile on cerveza. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, right, right, right. Very good. Yeah. Well, let's stay in South America if we can, or with South American people at least. Uh, did you see that uh, Spurs man Richarlison uh, got a bit cheeky, apparently, to Antonio Conte? Although I say mm. he got a bit cheeky. That's actually to do uh, Richarlison... Um, a disservice. He got very blunt with Antonio he Conte. Did. Mm. Um, this was in an interview with a Brazilian journalist, Fred Bruno, this week, um, who was talking to Emerson Royal, or Royale, should I say, uh, who gave some information about Richarlison's mix-up with um, with his former coach, Antonio Conte. Um, so, so Richarlison was late for a game day meeting, and Conte said to him, he wasn't the only one, there was a few people who were, who were late. When they came in the room, Conte said, well, do you want to say something? Do you want to apologise to the rest of the team? 
And according to Emerson, some of the other latecomers sort of sheepishly apologise as one would, especially mm. when Antonio Conte is, is mm. firing that at you and, you know, you are late for, a, for an important meeting. Richarlison seem, seemingly misunderstood Conte and, and basically thought, this is a, this is a chance for me yeah, to, to say, to say, say how some I'm feeling about yeah. things. Yeah, well, yeah. if you're asking, I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. This uh, is, if this is an open forum, I've got some thoughts. Yeah, right. Um, and he said, ah, I think I need more minutes on the pitch. The formation <laughs> was no good. I didn't adapt to it. In fact, the formation is shit, <laughs> is what he said. <laughs> Which, even on a one-on-one with Conte, if you'd worked with him for a while, yeah. Yeah. and he really was trying to ask your, your, your most honest thoughts, that would still be a bit strong, I think. Yeah. I guess it's... maybe you're thinking, could I have a lower status here? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. It's unbelievable. I, 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 just hearing that, I thought, how is he still alive? I just think it's nice that there are there are hapless people in all walks of life. But yeah. how do you think? Conte... He's a bit. He's a bit Larry David, isn't he? Yeah. Think, oh, very much. Yeah. So there's a, there's. A, I mean, you know, fans of Kirby Enthusiasm will be aware that the, the last season of it is airing at the moment. Mm. So there will be a vacuum soon. Uh-huh. I'm mm. thinking some sort of all or nothing with Richarlison <laughs> yeah. might just naturally take its place, even if it isn't meant to be a comedy. So who would be as Richard Lewis at Spurs then? Oh, oh. Yeah. would it would it be Emerson Royal? Possibly. It's hard to say. God bless Richard Lewis. Yeah, it can't be Eric Dyer. No, that we know. It's Charlie Kane, isn't it? That kind of fits. He's, he's, he's no longer yeah. connected to Spurs. We no. think. Good point. Yeah, I, I just, I just thought it was brilliant. I wonder though if Conte, if that's what you've got to do, to mm. to kind of maybe earn his respect or or just blindside him so much that he kind of lets you off. Mm. Right. It's a bit like in nature, apparently, where if um, if uh, elephants stampede you, apparently if you stand your ground, mm. they run up to you to a close distance. And then they'll just stand there and then they'll just like kick the, the floor, like or basically like kick dust at you. They won't actually go through with the stampeding. I right. think that's maybe what you do with Conte. You just got to stand your ground. I really don't want to see Richarlison try that though. <laughs> <laughs> I, was in Ken- I was in Kenya once and a man uh, showed me his um, elephant whip. Oh. Is this a yeah, Peter? I don't massive. think that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was massive. What else did he show you, or should we not talk about it? <laughs> oh, dearie me. All right, everybody. Well, uh, on Monday night, um, Andy and I recorded Ramble Reacts after Sheffield United were slapped 6 0 by Arsenal, where we asked how it's got this bad at Bramall Lane. Now, reports that uh, Mikel Arteta was seen eating a sandwich in front of Chris Wilder are <laughs> as yet unconfirmed. So, do get that episode below in your podcast app. Now, coming up after at the break, we've got some Chelsea chat. We've got tonight's games, of course, and a suggestion that Sean Dyche might save the United Kingdom. See you in a minute. I'm bored watching Newcastle. Welcome back to the Football Ramble, everybody. <laughs> Peter, I believe you got an email. I uh, have, yes, uh, from uh, Percy Preston uh, after discussing Forest Chairman Evangelos Maranakis's, uh, well, uh, uh, talents, I suppose, on mm. Monday. Uh, prompted by Monday's episode, says uh, Percy, I decided to look up Forest Chairman Evangelos Maranakis's Wikipedia page lists him, amongst other things, as a media mogul, ship owner, and curiously, a lyricist. Ooh. It turns out that uh, he wrote the lyrics to uh, Exapsi, or Excitement, a song by the Greek pop star Natasa uh, Theodoridou. Um, perhaps predictably, given their author, the lyrics have some sinister undertones, <laughs> sure including, including described, uh, describing a loved one's presence like a silent scream. Oh, bloody hell. Um, I, I also looked at that uh, song, and it's uh, yeah, in your kiss, in your arms, in the curse and the wish, we will all burn together. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it sounds Ooh. like it's... A- <laughs> A, a note coded. to Nottingham Forest. Well, it yeah. sounds like a coded threat, doesn't it? Mm. You know how like... sounds like an insurance scam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it does. Yeah. It does. So, like Lord Byron would get around not being able to sort of say certain things by just writing poems about how, like like how he thought certain people would complete dickheads. And right. We'd just, like, okay, yeah, yeah, we'd just yeah, have yeah, a lovely yeah. time yeah. just Ducky, skirting Ducky. the Slang rules that way. Yeah. His burgers are good, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good, very good. Very burgery show today. I'm, 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 I'm here for it. I, I thought that was a welcome comment. Uh, mm, I agree. Uh, I, yes. As you know, I'm a big hugger, Peter. Mm. Um, Maranakis, he, he looks very cuddly, shall we say. It's a... oh, I'd say so, yeah. You could get, get a few minutes Are out you of saying him. That he is the Premier League chairman you would most like a hug off? Definitely yeah. not, Andy. I'd Be... like him topless on a bearskin rug. Yeah. <laughs> would you know? Would I know? In front of an would open fire. fire. <laughs> yeah, open yeah. fire, uh-huh. bearskin rug, right. a lot of jewellery. Uh-huh. No, no one else is around. No one else is yeah. around. <laughs> And, and this is what, like a sort of like performance review or no, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's sex. I want to right, have sex. sex. <laughs> just, okay, just that wanted to of a man. That. I yeah. think it, uh, he does look like a good hugger, mm. but the, the fear with Marinakis yeah. would be that like goes too far. Now, now let go. 
Yeah, no, yeah no, exactly. No, no, That's no, what no, I mean. No, and then you'd be like, the, I, I will at, never be seen again. Exactly. At the start, you'd be like, oh, this is, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, blimey. How do I get out of this? We will all burn together. Exactly. And you yeah. end up burning together. together. You have to wait until we'll Except he's fire. not burning. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to wait for the song to stop. That song particularly, <laughs> uh, which, um, yes, it is called Excitement. But mm. sometimes excitement leads to, let's just call it disappointment. Managerial sackings. <laughs> <laughs> it does, yeah. Well, one man's managerial sacking is another man's disappointment, mm. particularly the person uh, who's been sacked. We mentioned Matt Letizia's side hustle peddling CBD products. Uh, Jim, for those um, and myself who are, I'm not sure what that is. Um, Biff the juice is now probably how I'd <laughs> define it. But it, it's essentially for like relaxation and, and a, like a sleep aid, isn't it? Is how it's how it's marked. Cannabis oil. Isn't yeah, it? cannabis oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it turns out that old Matt uh, broke UK advertising rules in doing so, as did former Arsenal and Celtic striker John Hartson. They didn't tell consumers that they were being paid by the retailer, Supreme CBD. Um, and Hartson said the products were magic. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine everything that John Hartson experiences yeah. is bloody magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the combustion I, I, engine I, I, is, three is pints magic. Of it, three <laughs> pints of it and I feel magic. Yeah. How, how literal this was he being? moving stairs. <laughs> Escalator, you see. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, mind how you go uh, mm, with yeah. all that kind of crap, everybody. Yeah. Uh, right, um, back to the Premier League. Uh, reports this week are suggesting that Chelsea could be eyeing up a, Mor- um, a Maurizio Pochettino replacement. Um, he's, the, the chat seems to be that his future depends on whether Chelsea can secure European football, which is quite a tall order at the moment. Yeah, they have they? roots, so, don't they? They have roots. Yeah, they've got they've got the league and uh, the cup, potentially. Yes. True. Do you think that, that they will win the FA Cup or finish high enough in the league, Andy? Well, not necessarily, but they're still they're still in the mix, aren't they? Strasbourg's in Europe, yeah, they sort of own them as well. Uh huh. <laughs> Wolves, yeah, they're the... not, they're not getting in Europe. No, but, I mean, the they are physically. In they, it, they are physically <laughs> in Europe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there there are a few other sides, as, as I was sort of saying, Wolves there that this would apply to. I, I'm yeah. not confident Chelsea are going to win the FA Cup. Sure. And I'm not confident they're going to finish high enough in the league, Jim. Would you no, agree? I would agree very, very much so. The reports are that they're they're looking at potentially Ruben Amarim from Sporting and um, Roberto De Zerbi. And honestly, I think at this point, Brighton Council should just be calling up Todd Bowley and going, we've got this amazing old pier. It's quite it's quite, <laughs> quite burned. burned down, but I promise it's, it's, it's wicked. We'll the, do it for a really potential. competitive price for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I... <sighs> Yeah, I, I think it's such a tricky one because at Chelsea, Mauricio Pochettino hasn't really lit the place up that much. I know they got to a final, but let's be honest, they, they buggered it up when they got there. What do they do? It, they're getting a bit like Manchester United, if you see what I mean. They've got some talent in that squad, there's no doubt about that. But there's, there's question marks over the board and the owners of the club. Is it a case of you need the right manager? Imagine thinking firing the coach is the problem. Yeah. Or, or change the coach is the problem. Look, you can have issues with the way Pochettino has approached things tactically sometimes. We've already spoken, I've, I've spoken at length about how it's difficult to totally get a handle on Pochettino's work in, in, in recent years, particularly uh-huh. since he's, he's left Spurs. But you look at Amarim and De Serbi, and the first thing I think is, why would they want to ruin their careers by going there? <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's not a knock on you know, Chelsea fans or anything like that. The, the, no, you're saying it's a bit of a poison chalice at the moment. Yeah. Like, like Not until, a long-term project, Until, is it? until no. the club has what can be seen from the outside as a clear plan upstairs, why would you go for it? Well, and, so, and, and again, so it's, it's slightly similar to Manchester United in that regard then. Mm, yeah. But, I, but with regards to a long-term plan, I mean, is it but at least, at least Manchester United are, you know, making some clear steps to improve. But it, what, it, the, the way that the way the football business runs. If you're a manager and you want to improve your team, you are slightly limited by fair play, presumably. So yeah. Yeah. Teams like Chelsea and Man United will always be attractive because they've got that global region and because they've got that income, mm-hmm. they can spend more money. And so you have a bit. You probably back yourself to sort of go, well, look, I'll have more chance to to improve the fortune of the team because I can invest in the, in this side, no matter what they've already got, presumably. So America. what what you you think that it's just that coach's thing of Saying, yeah, I, 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 can, I, I can change it. them. Yeah, I, I can, can change. You, yeah. you might back, back yourself if you. I mean, yeah. look at what what Pete said. I mean, look at U- Ruben Amarim at Sporting. I mean, the riches that he would be able to have at his his 
you Although, know, fingertips in the Premier League. The thing is, though, at Chelsea, though, they, he's going to have to sell to buy to do that, isn't he? Because they're quite they're quite up against it with FFP because of what they've spent already. I guess, so I guess going back to it, going back that, to Pete's every year, it gets issue, better it? and better, though, doesn't it? Presumably, you're going back it's to Pete's point. Ceiling. Is, well, okay. Is that do you know do, do, do coaches really think like that? Are they just get presented with a project by the board and they go, yeah, that's that's probably yeah. fine, isn't it? Mm. The, the, the real st- I'm mainly looking at this figure that involves <laughs> what's going to be written on my wage sheet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And if you sack me, I get how much? <laughs> yeah, I think this, it feels like we're still waiting for the kind of Todd Bowley era to like settle, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yes. You thought the chaos would be finished by now. And I guess with Pochettino... Bringing him in, you know that you you're not getting sort of like a new young manager who where we don't know what his ceiling is. You know, we, you, you, the idea is you know what you're going to get with with Pochettino, and I think they could reasonably expect essentially a sort of a degree of competitiveness, like a baseline level of competitiveness do, do, do that's been think, higher than this has been. Do you think? Because I I said at the start of the season, there's no way they're making Europe, and I would say what he's done is pretty much par. It's not amazing, mm. but I would say it's par. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was interesting. Like the, the club is a mess. Yeah. But I think they'd expect to be better than, higher than what, they're 11th now, aren't they? It's, it's similar to last season. Well, they're they're a mid-table side. Well, but I mean, surely Chelsea can't expect that. It, like, Sorry, surely Chelsea can't accept that at any level. Of, of course they can't. But the, So the recruit moment, better. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the answer. At the it? moment, when you watch Chelsea... The, the, the league table doesn't lie, Jim. Indeed, they indeed. are playing like a mid-table side. Sometimes, you know, it's, it, it, there's no um, consistency. Sometimes, you know, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe, maybe shit. shit yeah, you know, that's how it goes. And it was interesting. Um, Claude Makélélé, who was who's been at the club um, for a few years, he left what about six months or a year ago, whenever it was. Um, he gave an interview the other day in the Athletic, and he was talking about how under Abramovich. Obviously, towards the end of Abramovich's reign, there was there was this talk about Chelsea DNA. Now, when people talk about DNAs of, of clubs, sometimes you think, well, pff, you know, what on earth does that mean? Mm. But sometimes, if it's done well, you think, oh, okay, I, I I can see what you're doing there. You're trying to think of perhaps a slightly longer term plan and and bringing the academy products and so on, which they have done, you know, in, mm. in fairly recent years. And he he then was sort of alluding to that under Bowley in this new regime where he kind of you know he he, he left the club. He's like they've just signed tons and tons of young players yeah. who are not ready for the big time yet. They've got talent, they've got great potential, they've paid way over the odds for some of them, of course. And it's almost like it's kind of cut off the production line from the academy, which yeah. has been fairly successful, you'd have to say. So again, like this, this the, the, the regime change, and we totally get and understand and, and, and you know why there was a regime change, for crying out loud, of course, not getting into that. But it does seem like that when you said there, Jim, it hasn't settled. Will it ever settle? I mean, you think about yeah, that's think question, about Manchester United under the Glazers. You know, that's never really settled. And I understand that they've, with with Ferguson, of course, he papered over a lot of the cracks because you know Sir Alex Ferguson. You know, you go lower down the leagues. I mean, you know, you can start picking out all these examples. Look at Venkis that, at Blackburn. Yeah. I know that seems ridiculous to mention them in the context of Manchester United and Chelsea, but it's still an ownership that's been there for a long time that is still disliked, that's still yeah, yeah. not is settled. It, is it not just that them kind of investing in, in in young players that didn't come to their academy? Isn't that not just what big companies do and people with money and really wealthy people do in a recession? They invest in um, assets. Yeah. So therefore, like the, these players that are investing in, you're not going to lose money on a 21 year old who's, you know, even if they're English. You know, if, you, if you're that, paying that much money, though, you might, like, yeah. like if, that, if they were going to if they were going to sell Caicedo or Enzo for they're example, never tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're, they're never getting it back. Right. But that might also be true of a lot of the, the young players that they, they've signed who, who are just sort of knocking about in this this huge huge squad, yeah. not really having a place. Well, that's the problem. They are those young players. They they they've, they've paid established player money mm. for players who who still have growth to do mm. and maybe don't have the environment around them to develop them to at the pace yeah. that they should be developing. Yeah. No, I think mm. I think that's a fair comment. I think that is a fair comment. Um speaking of 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 trying to save situations, we'd move on to Sean Dyche, everybody. Um now he was recently a guest uh, at an event hosted by Sukia Starmer where the Labour leader wanted to get some ideas uh, for his party if they indeed do go on and form the next UK government. And who better, Jim, to, Sean Dyche. To, than Sean Dyche to, to advise on that? Yeah. Because let's be honest, this country right now 
he's looking over his shoulder at relegation. It is. It is. <laughs> and it's been appalling on set pieces. Appalling on set pieces. Do you not think that, like, um, I mean, it's hardly Tony Blair and, you know, um, Oasis turning up no, at number not, 10, is it? it? Specifically Noel Gallagher, might no, I add. There's no, no way Liam okay, Gallagher's right. getting invited to number 10. Yeah. Yeah. He might get in. He, he but might be. But he's, <laughs> but he's oh, not going to be invited. He'd be yeah. a face at the window, I've no doubt. Um, I don't think he'd come these days, would he? Oh, I think Even he if would. He would oh, I think he'd play, he, 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 he would owe us that. <laughs> uh, very much so, yeah. But yeah, Sean Dyche was there. National service, back in. Yeah, I tell Mainly you who... for young people in the Liverpool area. <laughs> well, I'd care for. Um, They've got too much downtime. <laughs> um, I tell you who else was there. Peter Reid. Oh, what on earth is going on? Well, it was presumably in a, a new... conference room in a hotel. There was a bar nearby. He happened to be there. I sure. think I think he's more going to be brought in as like um, sort of defra recycling minister. Yeah, um, you walk in. He's tires got a for desk. seats. Tires for seats. He's so, on a tire. So, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, ultimate recycling. That's right. Graham Lasso was there. Guardian right, Night Czar. Right yeah, reckon, presuming yeah. to tell them all what the Guardian were reporting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kelly Cates. Yeah, actually, she should be the night czar because yeah. she's obviously worked every single evening for the last 15 years, pretty That's much. Right. And Clive Tilsley. Clive's just happy to be there. Oh, yeah. Tildo. Mm. It's, it's just... Minister for Fertility. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he write might, a sexy You might book? have to clarify those guys. He, no, he... he's, he's, he's prolific sexually. He <laughs> is a monster. <laughs> His book had a he's lot happily, of He's happily married, by happily the way. Happily married. <laughs> yeah, and she's exhausted. <laughs> But happy. Yeah. Very happy. Talk about football DNA. Yeah. Oh, I love the guy. You, you read his book. Do you want to oh, leave I, it there? He's a lovely man. Interviewed lovely him about Genuinely book. lovely man. There were there were just lots of references to sex in it, which yeah. was not surprising. Expecting. Yeah. <laughs> were they the best bits of the book? Um, all of it was the best bit. Yeah, okay. Well well done. Well done. Team sheets and silk sheets. Yeah. The Clive Tilsley story. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who out of Sean Dyche, Peter Reed, Graham Lasso, Kelly Cates and Clive Tilsley would you take advice on if you were running the country? I mean, he's obviously can take advice from them all. Um, I mean, I don't know any of them. You know so Clive Tilsley. You, uh, not you know that, people not like Peter well. Reed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think Peter Reed might. Uh, can I, yeah. say, can, oh, can I have you. Keir Starmer? <laughs> if, 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 <laughs> you are Sir Keir Starmer. Oh, I, 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 I am Sir Keir Starmer in that. Mm. You can't have the bloke who's who's tipped to be the next prime minister giving you advice about how he's going to what, what's going to be like as yeah, prime yeah, minister. I, 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 I just having a go at him about Jimmy Savile. I mean, it is going to be hours. <laughs> it is going to be Daesh there. It's going to be Daesh, yeah. It is going to, it's getting a bit Daeshy. All right, well, um, if it goes well, then we know who to give the credit to. <laughs> My goodness. Right, everybody, tonight, uh, Manchester City face FC Copenhagen at Real Madrid, of course, play RB Leipzig. Now, Netflix are set to release a behind-the-scenes documentary series about Manchester City's treble win last season. How about that? Another PR exercise, guys. Yeah, everyone loves an underdog story. <laughs> yeah. Although... <laughs> If it follows the sort of 48 hours Jack Grealish had post Champions League talking. win, I'm, yeah. I'm there. Now I am that there could, on that day could be one. something. Ah, oh, that would oh, that is it, is prodigy it, video. Has anyone ever had, <laughs> <laughs> has anyone ever had a better time than that? I don't think so. Uh, it looked like he was having a good, yeah. Magnificent. You've got to pace yourself. And has he's anyone got, had he, a more severe hangover than that? And he's got the photo to prove it. Do you not yeah. think that, that one when he's on the bus, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you not think that like at that age you are impervious to that sort of stuff? And also you could probably get some futuristic space trips because he's a footballer. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 I think he'll, let's be fair, he'll have a very high metabolism. Mm. He'd, have, exactly. he'd have been all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd yeah. have thought so, yeah. I mean, I, I'm still jaded by Netflix's attempt at a football documentary with that Juventus thing. It was about six or seven years ago. That was that was the worst. And I think Andy, it was so shit. It was, it was absolutely no, it was tedious. Painful, painful. If you think, everybody, if you hadn't seen that, if you think that some of these documentaries that we see about football clubs, and the all or nothing ones, I think are okay. Like, it's obviously, you're not going to go in there and undercover, like, real kind of stuff that the club doesn't want you to undercover. So, you know, you have to have a little bit of reality. But but often, they are sort of quite PRE exercises, yeah. to, be, to be fair. But, I mean, this one was just off the scale. It was like, you know... Soviet but, but, stuff. But, but, do you know what I mean? It was just it so was, crap. It was it was so bad that subsequent documentaries have been better because of it. Well, you would hope so. Uh, but I mean, Andy, if, the way it feels that way. The I, I voice, just... I did the voiceover. Like honestly, like Juventus, they would be they would be one nil down at home to like Lecce, and then they pull it round two one. They win with <laughs> two goals in the fifty sixth and the seventy seventh minute, and he would go on about as if they just 
done a Manchester United <laughs> against Bayern in 99. You know what? You've just described Jose Mourinho at Roma there. <laughs> but I, I would like to think that after the Amazon series, they've maybe taken a bit of feedback and they approach it slightly right. differently this time. We I think, I think the thing is with the all or nothing things, the football ones really pale in comparison to the American football ones. Now, I'm not a great follower of American football, but I've watched a couple of those. And Are I they guess good or bad? Because really good. Right. And I guess it's because of American sporting culture that that whole idea that, you know, journalists and media are invited in the locker room. It just You can makes see the it... players' willies. <laughs> that's how, that's can, how yeah. close the relationship mm, is. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I was going to say LeBron James eating a sandwich, but if you like... No, but you can, Andy. If, if you like. You and I have both, have both done it. <laughs> This is news to me. Yeah, oh, I've, I've mentioned that before in New York City FC. I went into the... Um, we were invited to go into the dressing room and I was right. going... And have a look at the, the willies. willies. Not for that particular <laughs> purpose. <laughs> you know. Line up. Uh, yeah. You... <laughs> One to 11. <laughs> <laughs> no, when Lampard was... I talked about this before. When mm. we went in yes. and the players are literally coming out of the shower. Right. Yes. Towels wrapped around them and all. And I was just like... What are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Like, can we not just, lads, let's all go outside for crying out loud. Let them fish us some But nudity, nudity aside, yeah. I, I think the idea that you're, all, you're more open with the media. Well. That, like, it's a difference between US and European sporting culture, really, yeah. isn't it? Mm. I just wonder, is European sporting culture capable of letting film crews in to make an interesting enough documentary series? Yeah, possibly. Netflix, you've got a chance here. Don't bugger it up. Uh, Manchester City also have a chance to go through to the next round. It's unlikely that they're going to bugger it up at home to FC Copenhagen, Andy. You would, you would agree. Very much so. Mm. Uh, what about Real Madrid, though? RB Leipzig. <laughs> I love that you've just... That's all the consideration that needs. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK. Yes, you're right. No, you you're right. S- you're right. Okay. <laughs> I just en- enjoyed how correct that was. <laughs> well, like, obviously, Real Madrid are massive favourites, mm. but mm. you look at the team that Leipzig picked at the weekend and they left their top scorer Loisa Pender out and Ooh. only brought him on for the second half in yeah. which he scored and was pretty good and you know he's one of the best strikers in Europe they still think they've got a chance mm. and the team that they picked and the way that they played their quite challenging away game at Bochum which they did actually win in the end at the weekend suggests that they think they, they are still in this well and Real Madrid are also currently committing the cardinal sin of football they're not playing to the whistle <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, score your goals in, in, in proper time, I would say. Yeah. Um, but Jude can really go for it tonight because uh, he's going to have a little bit of time off, isn't he? Well, all eyes on them tonight, mm. everybody. It's going to be uh, a predictable round of the <laughs> Champions League, one would think. Uh, but you never know with the old soccer ball. Right, thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble, part of the ACAST Creator Network. Patron subscribers, don't go anywhere. Keep listening for Ramble Uncut. And if you're not a patron subscriber, sign up to get Ramble Uncut every single Wednesday. Head over to patreon.com forward slash football ramble. And of course, everybody can follow us on Twitter, which is currently known as X, TikTok, YouTube and Instagram at Football Ramble and follow us on Spotify. Thank you, Andy B. Thank you. Thank you, Petey D. Goodbye. Thank you, Jimmy C. Thank you. We'll see you all very, very soon. Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.